Welcome to this After Effects tutorial. Um, I'm actually a YouTuber. This is my I just do this for fun and tutorials. So if you're looking to do shaky text stuff, it's one of my favorite things to do because it's very simple, um, stupidly simple, uh, but it, it actually brings videos to life. Um, as I've said in some of these other tutorials, some of the better edits are very subtle. Of course, you some if you're just editing like a gameplay compilation, then whatever. You don't really need to be doing that much except highlight the gameplay. But if you're doing like video essay stuff and you're like, I know the topics where you do not know what to put. Sometimes it's just effective to um, put text on the screen or uh, have text reiterate what you're saying. Um... So that's what I'm going to show you today. It's very simple. I've done this before in my tutorials, but I thought it would make more sense if I did it again. So we're going to make a new composition. Honestly, doesn't matter. I like to put my frame rates low, like 15. Some people think you should make every video 60 frames per second, and that might be true if you're making gaming videos, but I find that if you're doing motion graphic based videos that 30 suffices, and honestly it looks better. I hate when things look too like sharp. It just doesn't make motion look good, at least in my opinion. And this part, oops, I have two views open, awkward. Uh, this part is easy. Um, and I think this could also benefit from those who may not know After Effects. For example, if we're not playing chess here, uh, if you want to turn that off, press that. That makes the checkerboard. That just toggles transparency, but not everything needs transparency. And some things you can sort of discern better when it is a black screen. So for the text effects, uh, we're not going to start with text. We're going to start um, whoops, by making a solid. We're going to need a solid first. You first right click this area or um, you go up here and make a new, well, he can't, and you make a new solid or use keyboard shortcuts. They're very helpful to learn what shortcuts do which and um, some people who struggle with learning this software, I, I find when you just get a, you just like take a little gander at what the shortcuts are and start implementing them and if you're using stuff a lot you can benefit from doing these each time R whatever we're gonna make our solid fractal noise i don't actually think naming this one makes too much sense so you get this solid it basically takes the whole frame and it does this but we call it fractal noise because the only effect that this solid the color doesn't matter but you take the fractal noise you can just drag these effects onto or you try you do drag it onto the actual layer I think you can even just throw it in here too. All of this is doing, uh, what fractal noise does, it generates a random uh, set of this fractal noise. These are all just individual pixels and it generates this. You can alter the contrast to make it, as, as you can see, more harsher colors or soften it up so it's one. We'll get to this later. But for now, we don't really need to mess with these options. What you're going to want to mess with, however, is these evolution options. Specifically, we open this menu and see the random seed. Um, something you'll also learn with After Effects is there's like a hidden menu. It's like it's a secret ass menu. But for the everyman who's just making stupid memes and just want to make YouTube videos for fun, uh, you'll need to access this for a few things. Here, if you want to set the random seed and make it so it changes at an interval, you type time. Let's see what happens when we write two. That is what happens. It will move at that rate. Why don't we try 15? Now it's moving faster. So that will be important later to determine what you want to do. But since we've done what we needed to do with the fractal noise, now we're going to right click, and this is another aspect of After Effects, this is ex it's extremely important. It's one of my favorite and ultimately one of the most powerful parts of it is a pre-compose. So, so definition based, this is what we consider a composition or a comp. Uh, new composition, we can put anything, we say Yoshi is a great friend, boom, and there's your new composition. And these are contained within the same project, which is important for referencing. Um, for now, however, we don't need Yoshi's open. We're going to pre-compose this. Pre-composing means you put a composition within this composition, or rather, the composition we've been working with. We could have fractal noise, and we could also have something else here. You could select as many parts. So let's say I had 
solid and I put another one for example you could select both of them you could choose one of them um, and you could pre-compose both of them together also maybe that's important as well these are all just little things I'm kind of trying to think about how a beginner will do this if you want to select more than one you're gonna hold down shift boom the selected together um, those are just universal shortcuts control um, actually well there's here's the difference here's here's the big money maker difference I know maybe this is not interesting but I feel like it might help you so control you can select one or two if you hold down control boom 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 you see what I did there shift it'll select everything it'll like collect everything from here to here to here from here to here it'll collect all of it control will only collect what you select understood <laughs> everyone on the same page here big important when you have a lot of these layers I typically use control just because uh, you know you want to be in control of what you're selecting not shifting everything out of the way you know <laughs> we're gonna pre-compose this this man cannot stay on a point so you can label this new composition is that's why when I was uh, making the color it didn't really matter what I was naming it it could have been named anything but here we're gonna call this the noise um, and this checkbox here is extremely important as well so what this basically decides in a very short way is if the effects you've put on this layer stay on this layer or they are contained within the composition so what's the difference we're gonna do both first if you say leave all attributes in shaky text you're gonna find that the fractal noise you applied is just applied to the full composition and if we go in here this has no effects on it that is not what we want however what we want is for the composition to contain all the fractal noise and we're gonna pre-compose it and select the other option and we move all attributes into the new composition that way as you can see there's nothing coming in the effects controls that's because everything is in there boom baby so now what we haven't even gotten to text you wanted to make you probably hear like what this is a video on text what the heck um, it, it's really more on the shaky part so select your text it's very simple you go up here you could write whatever you want I think my fans will like that there's many things you can do with text in this program and I, I honestly think that you should if you if you don't know what you can do I would take a gander mess with the, all of these options if you can't oh you're gonna need to do that first what now how do we make the check the, the, the text shake so you'll notice we made this move but how do we get that and what does that have to do with text because the text here you'll notice it just stays it doesn't do much um, you can move it you can animate it like but each individual thing you can't animate the letters and there are probably other ways more time-consuming ways and arguably ways that make it a little bit more personalized but for a sweeping effect that is pretty effective here is the one thing you do so noise is turned off as you'll notice you want this little eyeball here to turn off the noise that means it's not seen um, but that doesn't mean it's useless it just means that it's not seen using a displacement map you can make it so um, well it's better if just, I'm much more of a person that like learns from seeing so here and you'll notice something happened to the text here and now it is moving if we press play it is all shaking and I'm sure you could relate it back to the noise I'm certain if we decided that I'm certain if we overlaid it you could find some way that it uh, relates to whatever is appearing there but more importantly even uh, you can really mess with it more so let's go back into noise just to show you what those effects we applied earlier can do remember we were talking about contrast right we can alter these options and let's just see what it does as you can see if you make it so there's less contrast between the two colors the text will be a little bit more understated as it moves and if you really want it to be impactful you can make a lot of contrast here and it looks like a bad dream and again you can change the speed so again and get to it so back to the time we could put it up to 12 and it would really get moving and if we go back to our shaky text you could have text that looks like this a little bit more watery it really is dependent on what you're trying to do with it 
but that isn't the extent because um, I've seen these tutorials that's how I've learned but no one really talks about the displacement displacement does uh, exactly what you think it just displaces stuff on a vertical and horizontal axis which means you can get it to look very chaotic like that now that might not be effective on its own but let's just change some of this up and now you have a nice little thing that has a background moving with the text that is one of my staple sort of edits so if you copy it that is, I mean that's what this <laughs> that's what my stuff looks like but I imagine using what we've learned here you could probably come up with something that's better um, because you could use this on text exclusively or you could have it on top of your art to give it that scribbly look it's something that I see a lot of people like doing when they're making their uh, story time videos with their animations and this uh, makes it a lot easier to achieve that effect of course if everyone started doing this it would uh, definitely be oversaturated but it does offer an option for simple things you can do to universally any edit so I hope you found it interesting and I hope you learned a little bit more about After Effects today um, it is again it's always nice to learn as much as you can with a program but it's also powerful when you know how to utilize parts of a program to bring whatever you're making to another level uh, anyways, this has been Alax. Take it easy, everyone, and I will see you on the flip side. <laughs>